This is our second episode in the Students Board Ireland webinar series where we ask some of Ireland's top student athletes to come on to this panel and share and discuss some of their experiences from competing and training at an elite level, but also balancing that with third level education. So I'm delighted to say that I'm joined by Lena Tice, who's an Irish hockey player. We've got Cormac Comerford, who's a skier, and we've got Eva McNichol, who's a power chair player. Welcome, guys. I hope you're all doing well. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Thanks, for having us. Okay. Lena, I'm going to start with you. Okay, so um, in the world of hockey, you're uh, a world medalist. You've been capped, what, over 100 times. Um, you also played a lot of cricket growing up. Um, you've now kind of, you're studying, you're in third level education. Can you give us uh, just kind of a bit of an insight into your experiences of uh, being a student athlete with, with all of that that's going on? Um, yeah, so I suppose I'm, I've spread out my degree over, um, you know, more years than perhaps most would have. Um, but yeah, so I've done four years now in UCD um, and I've played for UCD for all those four years as well. Um, and I, I kind of was in the international setup uh, already coming into university. Um, so uh, from the get go, it was, you know, really, really intense. Um, and, you know, I suppose hockey goes in four year cycles. So, um, you know, four years ago, we were already thinking about um, Tokyo and um, qualifying for that. Shame it didn't happen. Um, well, I mean, we did qualify, but um, obviously it was cancelled this summer. So can I jump in on that one because obviously, you had qualified or you have qualified there's now we think we'll be pushed back to 2021 does that fill you with a bit of uh, anxiety towards your studies or you know how you address that again for next year yeah it's 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 a really tough one i suppose like it's not something you ever think is going to happen and i mean there's a million things in the world that you didn't think would happen uh, that have happened this year um but yeah definitely it, you know it's it's changed my perspective on things and you know I, I have done you know I've already done four years in university um, and I don't I'm not exactly sure what I was going to do after the Olympics um, but you know I thought I would have a break or you know I just I thought it would be different so um, you know uh, looking ahead it's you know it's just something you just got to take in stride and deal with and put the things in place um, that, that I guess I need to sort of, you know, get through another year of Olympic preparation, because obviously it's, it's not easy, even though it's brilliant, you know, it's not easy. So um, yeah. And it, it will just mean that I might have to push my degree out over another year. Um, but sure. Everyone's used to that now. Like, um, so yeah. Well, you've obviously got great support in terms of um, that structure and been able to kind of push it out, which must mean a lot to you. Yeah. It, it, it's been incredible. I mean, um, you see the Ad Astra Academy are just, you know, unbelievable in, in how they've supported me with that. And, you know, I, you know, have big aspirations, I'm sure, like everyone on this call, for, you know, both in my academia and like on the sports pitch and just being part of, um, you know, uh, the Ad Astra Academy has really allowed me to sort of push as much as I can in, in both things and, and not sacrifice um, either of them at, at any one time. Yeah, really good. Um, Cormac, coming to you, okay, you mentioned something there earlier on about the amount of travel. Um, as a skier, you know, it's fair to say we don't have a whole lot of snow in Ireland. Um, I know you're, you're, you used to go up to Kiltearna there quite a lot. Again, it's a dry slope. Um, so you travel. Um, and obviously that must impact both your education, but your, your personal life as well. How have you kind of balanced that over the last number of years? Yeah, it's been interesting because uh, coming into university, my career was at a different stage. So I wasn't traveling so much, but over the years now, uh, I've been able to build up my career to where I'm pretty much training and competing full time. So now I spend the majority of the winter away on snow. And actually now I'm in... France at a training camp and um, so it's almost all year round um, but it's it's been definitely difficult and it's been a learning experience for me and also um, for the team the scholarship team and the lectures and everything at my university but we've all managed it pretty well I get on pretty well with my lectures and um, I'm studying mechanical engineering so there's a lot of practical work 
and um, in-house kind of assessments. So that's been tricky to get around, but um, yeah, we've we've worked really well together to come up with the, the best way to arrange around my competitive schedule. So I'm really grateful to all the guys at uh, TU Dublin because um, I don't think there's anyone else who's, who's spent so much time away because I don't have the facilities at home uh, to be training. So for me to train or race or do anything in my sport, I basically have to travel away. And with all that travel and having to relocate to different parts to, in order to better yourself, do, do you ever kind of feel you're, you're missing out on that kind of third level lifestyle, the nights out or anything like that? Yeah, but yeah, definitely. There's, I've missed out on like the kind of stereotypical student lifestyle that most people would have had. But um, the, I'd say the beauty of like a student lifestyle is you can make it what you want. Like the world is your oyster. So for me, my student experience and my student life has been progressing my career. And I've through through university, I still have my um, my best friends from my course and also different sporting clubs that I get involved with from time to time throughout the year. So I still have those really great friends at home. I have uh, great teammates that I can train with abroad. And um, so I have missed out on maybe the typical student lifestyle, but I've also been able to create my own. And uh, I'm really grateful for that because I never believed I could have been living the life I am in. Yeah, well, it's nice to uh, to to ski uh, and ski fast. I definitely can't do that. Um, Aoife, power chair. Um, a lot of people may not be too familiar with power chair. Um, was that something that you always part- participated in, or did it more come to the fore when you moved up to DCU? And, and how did how did like DCU support you in terms of your sport? Um, so in terms of when I actually started playing, um, I got involved in 2003. Um, that's when the sport was first introduced here in Ireland. Um, so that anyone that kind of doesn't know what it is, it's basically, um, it's, very, it's very similar to able-bodied soccer, uh, except we play four-side and it's uh, 20 minute halves. So um, yeah, I suppose I've been involved since it, it did start in Ireland, but in terms of internationally, like the sport has been going since the 80s in countries like France. Um, so in terms of its development, I suppose we're only kind of coming up to speed now with some of uh, the other countries. Um, in terms of when I moved up to Dublin, there actually wasn't um, a parachute football club in DCU at all. So um, like I've been in DCU seven years now, I'm almost part of the furniture at this stage. But um, when I moved up to DCU, there were some other uh, students who were wheelchair users as well. And um, so we kind of got together and said, look, will we try set up a club here and get something going? Um, so we did that in, in my first year uh, with the support of the, the sports development office and um, we got that set up and since I suppose its inception the club has been very successful and we've won um, national league titles in Ireland and I, through that then got to, to travel to Champions League tournaments um, but it's, it's brilliant that we've been able to, to set up the club in Dublin and had the support as well from the university because at the minute there is no other university and um, power chair football club and um, they're all kind of uh, I suppose region based so you'd have a, a club in the Midlands down in kind of Cork Kerry but in terms of a club being affiliated with a university we're the only one at the minute and that is something that I'd love to kind of see develop further moving forward and maybe see other clubs spring up um, in different universities if possible. I think it would be great if, if we could do that. Yeah, because I was reading up on, and you've been a great advocate for for people with disabilities and what you've done up in DCU. You've brought people together, people who, you know, arguably might have been quite isolated and you've made a team uh, of that. In terms of that support from, like, the university, when you went banging on the door and going, look, here's what we want to do, you know, wh- how they obviously were receptive to it, but how did they help you? How did they support you guys? Um, well, I think the, the first thing um, that DCU did was they kind of, I suppose, gave us a bit of funding just to get uh, equipment and kind of the essential bits and pieces um, that we needed to, to get the club up and running. Um, and they've also been quite flexible as well. So usually with uh, like a university uh, sports club, you can only register uh, current students. 
on the scene, but because of the, the nature of the club and the fact that you need like wheelchair users, um, obviously there wouldn't be a huge number of wheelchair users in, in DCU. So DCU, um, like the sport office were quite flexible in terms of allowing students outside the university to join as well, because otherwise we just wouldn't have been able to, to have the numbers, I suppose, to make up a team. Um, so they were very good in terms of that as well. Um, and then also um, helping us source a coach as well, like Fran Butler. He's the soccer development officer there. He would have been a great help uh, in terms of that um, at the time. Um, now, recently, we have uh, we actually don't have a coach at the minute, which has brought in itself its own challenges. Um, it's meant that kind of some of the more senior players like myself and a couple of the other guys um, have had to take on a coaching role as well as a playing role, which has been. Yeah, that's it. Uh, been a bit challenging, but uh, look, it, it's it's been going well so far, and um, hopefully we might be able to get get someone on board over the next while to, to help us out with the coaching side of things. Cormac, I'll come to you. Okay, similar sort of question. Um, yeah. again, you mentioned you're traveling, um, your your labs and trying to kind of balance everything. Like when you have busy training times, or maybe it's exam times. Is it a case that you have to maybe talk to a lecturer or talk to your personal coach and try and get that balance? How, how, does, how does Natalie go about that? Um, I, I'm in touch with my lecturers as often as, a, as possible. Um, so they're up to date with my schedule, what I'm, uh, what I'm around for, what I'm not around for, what's doable or not. And then um, usually I'm in touch with them and they accept like they support whatever kind of changes or adaptations I need to make um, for my labs or exams or whatever it is. So they're kind of the first point of contact. And if it's okay with them, then I'll usually go to um, the, the course head and the, the sports office and just make sure everything's okay with them. And um, yeah, once I'm in touch and in contact regularly, then I'm letting them know what's up, what I'm up to, when I'm around, um, then it works out pretty well. And the first time you did that, were you nervous? Were you thinking, oh, God, they're going to just shoot it down? Or did you have the confidence to go straight in and go, hey, listen, look, here's what I'm up to. Here's what I'm trying to do. Uh, can you support me? Um, yeah, what was really good was coming into university and um, attaining the scholarship at TU Dublin. The, the sports team set it out to me like, what's possible, what's not, what, what they're here to support me on. And so I kind of knew what um, was expected of me and what I could expect from them. So, um, yeah, so I was happy to go to lectures and ask for the flexibility that I needed. But in the end, it was, it was down to me how much work I was willing to put in to, to make it work. And there was no, like, there's no um, free passes or anything. I still have to get all the work done. I still have to hand it in. Maybe the the times I hand everything in are flexible. It's kind of about communicating that, and, and that's kind of, Lena, when, it, when, when I was chatting to you there before you got cut off, like, you know, that sort of um, having that upfront communication and knowing maybe your year, because I, I, I imagine like everyone here, your training is fairly structured, and maybe you periodize that over the course of the year. You know when your, your big kind of championships or really tough training camps are coming up. So... Like, would you agree, Lena? It's a case of just kind of highlighting that so your lecturers and your, your university know, okay, look, it might be delayed or it might be, um, you know, put on hold a little bit um, and they're supportive with that. Yeah, for sure. Just, I think, yeah, just plan, planning ahead um, and knowing what's, what's going to be ahead of you in that semester and almost like I, I often pick my modules even around it um, just to ensure that, you know, if there, if there are modules that really require a lot of like group work and I know I'm going to be traveling a lot that semester, you know, wow, that's just a decision I have to make, you know, is to, you know, maybe not take that one and pick one that's more exam based, just depending on my schedule. So, um, yeah. And then just being open and honest with, with lecturers, just emailing them, telling them what the sus is and, um, and also, you know, telling them that you have sort of the backing of, of your scholarship as well. Um, and, you know, m most people um, are very, very friendly and understanding. And, you know, you, you just got to speak up for yourself. That's what I found. 
Yeah, you know, that's a really good point in terms of picking modules and stuff like that. Um, it's probably something that maybe people don't know that can do and fit it around both their training and their competition. Um, Aoife, w- w- when you were looking at going to DCU, did you know much about the, the scholarship setup or the information? Did you know, you know how much they could support you? Not really. Um, no, I didn't really know a huge amount at all. Um, and it was only in my second year, I think, in DCU that I actually applied for the scholarship program. I wasn't even on the program in my first year. Um, so I think I just heard it maybe through an event or something in the university, but I actually wasn't even aware of it before that um, or the types of supports that were available. Um, so that was definitely something that would have been I don't know, useful kind of maybe in leaving cert, have more information about it. And the types of sports that were available in DC. And likewise, Cormac, for you as well, did you know much about the setup in um, in now TU Dublin in terms of how they can support the scholarship, or would you have liked to maybe known a little bit more? I had an idea, and I was looking for scholarships. I really needed um, some extra support to keep my career going. But for me, coming from a minority sport um, that you can't practice in Ireland that nobody there's no structure for in Ireland um I didn't know if they would if I'd be accepted or if I'd be supported so getting the scholarship in the first place was a huge relief and then when I when I realized all of the different supports like financial academic flexibility gym access mentoring sports psychology all of those things then the world just opened up because I couldn't have dreamed of even continuing my career at that time and then coming in getting a scholarship coming from a sport that is basically unknown in Ireland and it was it was huge for me and I've I've run with it and um, yeah it's taken me to a really good place now yeah excellent Um, and kind of like we're in the summer here and you know COVID or no COVID, you know, the whole CAO, people applying for third level education starting in September, a lot of sports people, a lot of talented athletes are kind of looking at options. You know, if you were to talk to, say, an 18-year-old, someone who's just finished their, their leaving cert, you know, what advice would you would you give in terms of, um, and Lena, I'll start with you, in terms of before transitioning into, into third level, like, is there anything they, they could do or find out? Um, yeah, I mean, I think first things first, like, like just know what your options are, um, because there's actually a world of options, um, in universities, uh, all over the country. Um, and so, you know, know what's there, uh, sp- and even specifically for your sport, know where the best place to be is. And, you know, if that's not going to be an option, know where the next best and the next best after that. Um, so, you know, get as much information as you can talk to people, Um, I certainly know that's what I did. Um, And, you know, you will find the best fit. Um, And I suppose even before that, just uh, start acclimatizing yourself to, you know, having to really manage your own time and, uh, you know, be disciplined in what you do, um, you know, when you're working and uh, when you're training. And so that when you go into university, you know, it's a smooth transition and you can really, really push in your sport uh, to the level that you want to get to. Excellent. And Aoife, I suppose if, if we kind of touched on, say, before you go to third level, what about that first month? So you arrive in university, it's, well, this is different, it's exciting, you're an elite athlete, you know, let's be honest, you could go one way or you could go the other, okay? So in terms of that first month, any advice you'd give to, say, a young student athlete? I think it's just um, all about balancing things Um, like obviously at times you do have to be disciplined and you know stick to your training regimes or schedules but at the same time you're in university you're there to enjoy yourself as well so I would say to students while obviously um, being disciplined is important that you do have to let off steam as well and and I would say like if there is events on or like often the clubs and societies are running events all throughout kind of the first few weeks to try and get involved as, in as much of that as possible. Um, but you do gain a huge amount as well from, from being involved in, in the different stuff that's going on in the college and lots of opportunities come with that. So um, yeah, just definitely have fun, enjoy yourself, um, but also just being mindful of 
if you do have tournaments or competitions going up, obviously you have to put in the effort and time uh, into preparing for those. But what about the long term? So we've, t- we've spoken about the pre, we, the first month. What about the, the long term kind of career and education? Like we're hearing people on the, even this call who have stretched out degrees for numerous years, going on for PhDs. You know, is there anything kind of for a young person to maybe think about for their long term? Um, yeah, I mean, I suppose it was a bit daunting because it's not what all your mates who aren't, um, you know, pursuing sports careers are doing um but at the same time it was you know it was a no-brainer like you know i uh you know i i didn't want to sacrifice either of them you know i didn't want to compromise the level that i could get to in either of them and you know so it's a no-brainer like if if you want it bad enough you'll do whatever it takes you know to to get there so um and then you know with the kind of support i had you know i knew i could i could do that i i could extend my degree so it's been tricky now, obviously, with, you know, I'd hope to, like, go back into university this year, do finish off, do my final year. Um, but, you know, with what's happened, you know, I, I just don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. So what I'll probably do is start off going full time and then um, see how I get on. But likely, you know, drop, drop down modules, uh, definitely in the second semester anyway. So... You just have to be be willing to adapt, and you know these are sort of the sacrifices you make, um, you know, when you're an elite athlete, and you know they're a hundred percent necessary. Yeah, excellent. And Aoife, you, you strike me as someone that's well able to to adapt. You know, would you agree with that in terms of the long term approach to balancing that student athlete career? Yeah, I suppose it's it's kind of very much a, a personal thing of what's going on for. The individual themselves um I suppose I've been lucky enough in that I haven't majorly had to um like extend my degree or PhD as such because of my sporting commitments um but I have had to be flexible um like obviously when I'm away at tournaments and competitions um I might have to either work more beforehand in terms of getting stuff in for my PhD or kind of working with my supervisors just to make sure I'm meeting all of my um, particular uh, deadlines. But I am very grateful, I suppose, for the support I have in DCU that enable me um, to do that. And it has uh, been, I assumed in DCU has, I suppose, definitely helped my my sport and career um, in that it's just been so easy. Um, in terms of training, having all the supports there that are available in the college as well. I think it definitely has um, developed me as a player um, and as a, a teammate as well, definitely. That's really good. Um, Cormac is just coming back in there. Cormac, you're straight into the firing squad here. Um, just to kind of wrap it all up to now at the end, guys, right? Um, I suppose just if you could give us maybe one or two golden nuggets of advice for the next generation. Okay. Is there anything at the top of your head there? I know I put you on the spot now, Cormac, but is there any key piece of advice that maybe you received or something that you'd maybe like to share to the next generation? Uh, there's a couple of things. I'd say uh, one really important thing, Lena kind of mentioned it there before, is take responsibility. Uh, because now like, you're going into adult life going into university like the, you've got the whole world in front of you all the opportunities are yours you might be leaving home but uh or you might just be changing university moving to a different country whatever um but there's so many opportunities and take responsibility and go with it make the decision and um whatever you decide to do go with it and do it to the best of your ability. It's like for me with sports, university gave me the opportunity to get to elite level. And also for anyone, even if you're not an elite athlete, there's so many opportunities to, that you can do in university. Like you can try any sport. If there's anything you ever wanted to do, you can do it in university because it, it's set up so well that you can access anything, different types of sports, activities, meeting new people. So like it's all there it's right in front of you so take the initiative and take your own onus to to go and try new things and learn and just try to be the best best version of yourself because it's there and you've got it right in front of you excellent 
well done. Uh, Lena, your, uh, your golden nugget of advice? Um, yeah, I suppose mine is sort of aimed at people who are striving to, you know, um, get to the top of their sport. Um, and, you know, that's something we're all striving to do here. But I guess for me, it's just whatever you decide uh, your sort of dream is. Um, and it's so important to have actual dreams when you're playing sport. You know, don't be afraid of committing wholeheartedly to it. You know, often people are worried about committing to something because, you know, it might not work out. And the truth is, like, it might not work out. I might never go to an Olympics. I might never get picked for one. Um, but you can't be afraid of just committing to it wholeheartedly and then just living, living with the outcome. Yeah, well said. And Eva, the final word, what's your golden nugget of advice? Um, I think if I was to give students advice, it would be to just, I suppose, push themselves and work hard. Um, nothing is going to come easy, whether it's in your academic life, your, your sporting life or um, any other aspect of your life. Um, and I think it's just been kind of, as Lena said, having goals, um, being dedicated, being committed, and being willing to put in the time, put in the effort. Um, and sometimes it's hard, like, I'm not going to say it's easy. Um, sometimes it is challenging and you will hit roadblocks and setbacks. But um, at the end of the day, when you do maybe reach a particular goal, you, you have your mindset on, whether it's maybe competing for your country or uh, representing your club um, at a, a major tournament, like it kind of, makes it all the worthwhile um so i just yeah just uh, advise students just to stay positive and and just really focus on on their goals and, and dreams if i could just say one thing actually yeah go ahead um, for anyone who's looking to get a scholarship or going into university for elite sport or whatever the reason it is for sport and um, Look at who look at your peers or people who are in university on scholarships. Most universities have their scholars on their website or on their social media or something. Don't be afraid to to message us or them or whoever your kind of idol is yeah. because mm -hmm. most of us have been through this journey and we've also been there where you are right now going into university. So um we're very happy to get a message from you and if you've got any questions then like definitely hit us up. So. Yeah, look, I think that's, that's a really good point. And um, I know for, for some people in maybe in individual sports, it might be a little bit difficult, but definitely people who are in team sports. And I know, uh, Lena, you kind of mentioned playing hockey. I'm sure that when you were playing, it was people that were a little bit older who maybe were in third level education. It's kind of just going, here, guys, what's it like? You know, what can I do? And having that openness. So um, I think you're absolutely spot on with that. And it's, it's, it's like anything. It's like picking up the phone, going into a university, asking the questions, how does it work? What can I avail of? Or what is a scholarship? Um, and, and, you know, just asking for help and advice along the way. But guys, that's, uh, that's brought it to, to a close. I really appreciate your time. Uh, Aoife, Lena, Cormac, I wish you all the best. Um, stay safe, train hard, and uh, keep waving that flag, okay? So, uh, pleasure to chat to you. Uh, wish you all the best. Take it easy. Yeah.